Welcome everyone to Getting Technology Donations Through TechSoup. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really want today's session to be guided by you. So in just a few moments we will be asking you a few poll questions to guide us in which topics we are going to cover today. Before we do that, we want to make sure that everyone is comfortable using ReadyTalk, the webinar platform we are using today. You can chat into us anytime using the box on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Let us know if you have any issues with the audio or viewing the slides. And this is also where you can ask questions. We will be flagging them and queuing them up for our Q&A slots later on. We will be keeping all participant lines muted so we have a nice clear recording for you to refer back to. If you lose your Internet connection, you can reconnect using the link emailed to you in your registration confirmation or reminder email. And if you registered more than an hour ago, the reminder email also will have a copy of the slides we are using today, although most of what we are going to be doing is a live demo guided by the questions you want answered. You will also receive a follow-up email with the slides and a link to the recording of the webinar, including all of the links and resources that we will be sharing today. And that follow-up email will come out in the next day or two. If you are hearing an echo through your computer speakers or having other issues with the audio, you can also dial in via phone using the toll-free 800 number that is listed in your registration email. You are being recorded today as I mentioned. You will be able to find the recording on TechSoup's webinar page within a day or two. This is also where we share all our other webinar recordings and our upcoming webinars. So we encourage you to check it out at TechSoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. You can also view recorded webinars and videos on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TechSoup video. And if you are following along on Twitter, uh, you can also tweet us at TechSoup or using the hashtag TechSoup. My name is Arielle Gilbert-Knight, and I'm the Content Director here at TechSoup. I've been here for four years, and I manage the team that creates our product content, blog, articles, and webinars among other things. I'm also joined today by Bevan Garrett, who is an Account Management Specialist in TechSoup's Client Services team. She helps nonprofits, libraries, and foundations navigate their way through all of the technology donation programs available through TechSoup. And she's heard every question anybody has ever asked, so this is the time to ask all of your burning questions. Also from TechSoup helping out with answering questions in chat is Ali Bezdikian. So welcome everyone and thank you. A quick look at our agenda for today. I'm going to briefly introduce TechSoup and then we'll do some polls to help me figure out which topics you really want to cover. So then we'll focus on the topics you're most interested in, which will mostly be a live demo of using TechSoup, and we'll also include time for Q&A. And so what's listed here on the agenda slide is some topics we could cover, but it will, really most of the agenda will be set by your responses to the upcoming live polls. A few quick words about TechSoup. We are all located here in our San Francisco office, all of us being the people who are uh, working on this webinar. We have uh, people located in many other parts of the world. Why don't you go ahead and chat in where you are located. And while you are doing that, I will tell you a little bit more about TechSoup. We are just thrilled to announce that as of yesterday, TechSoup donations are available in almost every country in the world except for those very few where as a U.S. company we are not allowed to uh, work. So uh, we are now able to provide technology donations and resources uh, across the world. And so if you are joining us from outside the U.S. or your organization has offices or branches outside of the U.S., I encourage you to check out uh, TechSoup.Global which is our new global portal for uh, product donations worldwide. Like many of you joining us today, TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit. And we have over the past 20 plus years uh, connected nonprofits, libraries, and foundations with over $5.2 billion in technology products and grants from over 100 corporate and foundation partners. All right, that's enough about us. 
Now we want to know what you want to learn. So go ahead and click on the screen and let us know uh, what you most want to learn about today. All right. And if you don't see uh, any the t particular topic that you are interested in, uh, go ahead and tell us about it in the chat. If somebody wants to know about hardware donation programs, somebody else wants to know about website improvement. All right. I'm going to be closing the poll in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. It looks like the top topics were software donation programs followed by hardware donation programs uh, tied with eligibility and restrictions. And then the next most popular topics were learning resources and webinars, training, and other events. So we may, we'll, we'll definitely cover all of those things, and we'll also be able to touch on most likely uh, some of the other questions that got slightly fewer votes. Thanks everybody. All right, next quick question is whether you have personally requested any donations from TechSoup on behalf of your organization. All right. The answers are coming in, and it looks like the vast majority of you have not yet requested donations on behalf of your organization. So that's very helpful. Hopefully uh, you'll have enough information at the end of this webinar to be able to do that. Close the poll. And then one last question, which is, are you registered with TechSoup? Yes, no, or you're not sure. All right. It's looking like the vast majority of you are uh, already registered with TechSoup, but there are about mm, a third of you uh, that either are not registered or are not sure. So we'll briefly cover registration uh, as part of this presentation. Great. All right, I'm going to show you a couple of quick things to get you oriented. I'm going to switch over to sharing my screen. Now let me know, or let Ali know in the chat if you can't see my screen. As of yesterday, you may notice some changes to TechSoup if you've been here before. We have a new uh, mini site and a new greeting page uh, up in front of TechSoup that we hope really does a great job of explaining the many, many ways in which TechSoup can help you. So if you see this page, uh, you can click Meet TechSoup to learn more about us, or you can just skip straight to the regular TechSoup that you're used to. A couple of quick things about what you can see on Meet TechSoup. This is one way to access uh, the list of different countries that we offer donations in. So if you're uh, from outside the United States or your organization has offices outside of the United States, you can choose your country here to learn about what is available to you in your country. There are also a number of uh, other things that you can learn about including our community and education initiatives. And it's a really good way to just learn about the many things beyond the software and hardware donation programs that TechSoup offers. But I know that most of you were interested in learning primarily about the hardware and software donation programs, so we're really going to focus on just looking at uh, TechSoup.org. Quick orientation. This is our homepage. We have some spotlights here where we feature new and interesting donation programs. So right now we're featuring QuickBooks, 
the new Office 2016. And the third slot here is almost always for what our next upcoming webinar is. So this is a really great way to get a quick snapshot of what's new and exciting and interesting at TechSoup. If you go all the way down to the bottom, this is also where you sign up for our newsletters. Our newsletters come out uh, once a week for the By the Cup newsletter. And By the Cup will include new content, technology learning resources, upcoming webinars, as well as exciting new product donations. And then twice a month we also have a product alert which is really focused on the newest and most interesting technology donations that are available through TechSoup. So if you are eagerly awaiting for something uh, to be available through TechSoup, those newsletters are a really great way for you to learn about what's arrived. If you are joining us from a library today, we also have a monthly newsletter that's just for libraries. So if you want to learn more about TechSoup and be the first to know when exciting new things happen, I encourage you to sign up for our newsletters. All right, for those of you who are not yet signed up with TechSoup or are not sure, at the very top of the website there is this big orange Join button. If you just click on that, you will be taken through the registration process. And the first step is to register as an individual. I'm just doing a fake sign up. So you'll provide an email address. And create a member name. And create a nice, strong, secure password that you will also remember, which is often a challenge to accomplish both of those things. And then create a security question. And I'm going to say, what are you doing right now? The answer is presenting on a webinar. And this is also another spot where you can sign up for our newsletters to get alerts. And then you have to do a little bit of math. This is the last time we'll make you do math, we promise. Click Continue. And I forgot to fill something out. Let's see what I missed. Oop. I already exist, REL testing. Uh, sorry about that. Let's see. Agree to the terms of service. Do a little more math. Just going to think about it for a little while. And the next thing is to tell us a little bit about your organization. So whether you're a 501c3 nonprofit, a 501c3 public library, or a non-501c3 public library. And when you're going through this process, you need it's really helpful to have a couple of pieces of information at your fingertips, one of which is your EIN or your employer, employee, employer identification number. I'm just going to use a test one. And if you don't happen to have this information, you can uh, save and come back. All right. And <clears throat> there are lots and lots of organizations that use this default uh, employer identification number. So uh, you can filter it down to a shorter list by state or zip code. And I'm going to show you what it looks like to start an organization from scratch. So let's say you don't see your organization listed here. You can go in and register your organization at the bottom of the screen. And there are a couple of really critical pieces of information that you are going to provide here. The first of which is the organization type. So your organization type, this list is not made up by TechSoup. It's an official list. Uh, but created by the IRS uh, that helps the IRS define uh, how, uh, what kind of organization you are. 
I know a lot of the uh, nonprofits out there do a lot of different things. So just try and pick the organization type that uh, most closely matches your primary mission. So for example, if you are a church or other religious organization that also operates a food pantry, your primary mission might be religious activities versus uh, services to um, the poor. So I'm just going to choose cultural, historical, or other educational activities. And the list of subtypes will automatically refresh based on the organization type you've chosen. The reason this uh, organization type and subtype is so important is that each of our donor partners chooses which types of organizations they want their philanthropy to support. So in the same way that you as an individual choose what kind of organizations you want to donate to, or a foundation or other grant maker chooses the kind of projects they want to support, our donor partners at TechSoup also decide uh, which kinds of organizations they want to donate technology and um, other resources to. So your org type and subtype has a tremendous impact on which donation programs you are eligible for. I'm going to choose an arts education organization. And then I'm going to kind of skip over uh, the uh, contact information because uh, I'm not going to save this as a, a real organization. But I did want to mention another really critical piece of information, uh, which is your budget. Uh, your budget also affects which programs you are eligible for through TechSoup. Our donor partners also decide what, um, what size of organizations they want to support. So some donation programs are focused on organizations with a budget under $500,000. They want to really focus on smaller organizations for example. So uh, the org type and subtype and budget um, are two major pieces of information you really want to have. The other thing I wanted to mention is that you will also be asked to enter an organization email address. And this is ideally something different from your personal individual email address. So if you have an address that's something like information at, or webmaster at, or in charge of everything at, uh, that's the kind of email address you want to use because all of the messages about the product donations including how to access them, the keys to make your licenses work, and other account information goes to this organization email address. So ideally it's an address that multiple people at your organization can have access to, um, and it's also ideally one that is checked regularly. Oops. I'm just going to log out quick. And the next thing I'm going to show you is if you have questions about your eligibility or you're not um, really, really familiar with TechSoup, there's a great easy way to find out which programs are available to your organization, which is under this Get Products and Services menu. Go to check your eligibility, and we have this little quiz that you can take that will tell you what kind of donation programs your organization is most likely for, likely eligible for. So I'm going to say I'm a 501c3 nonprofit. I'm located in California, and my organization's mission this time is, let's say, uh, religious activities. I'm a church. And my annual operating budget is $500,000. And then after you filled that in, you check your eligibility. And you get a list of all of the donation programs that that organization type and subtype and budget size are eligible for. Now if you're already registered for TechSoup, I'm just going to log in with yet another testing account. And 
And if I'm logged in and I choose Check Your Eligibility, I have multiple organizations that I'm associated with, so I want to check my eligibility for Test Test. And there you go. So this is a really great place to just get a quick overview of the kind of donation programs that you are most likely eligible for. A couple of other ways to find out what's available through TechSoup. Also in this Get Products and Services menu, you can browse for product donations in a variety of ways. Let's say you, just, you know you, just, you want Microsoft donations. So you go to Get Products and Services, choose by donor or provider, and then we have a list of all of our donor partners through TechSoup. And you can just choose Microsoft from the list, and that will take you to an overview page that explains a little bit about how the Microsoft Donation Program works, including an overview of eligibility and some key questions that uh, people often ask about the volume licensing, which I'll talk a tiny bit about later, um, and other kinds of licensing and other kind of products that are available. You're going to click on Browse Microsoft Products, and then you can see a whole list of all of the Microsoft products that are available through TechSoup. So if you want desktop software like Office, uh, you can choose Office Suites or individual applications. If you are interested in Windows, you would choose Microsoft Windows PC Operating System Upgrades. And then the list of products below refreshes to show you what's available through TechSoup. A couple of other things to highlight on many pages uh, in uh, the TechSoup website. There will also be a list in the right sidebar of related educational and supporting content. Uh, so for example, on the Microsoft page you can see we have an article about what's new and different in Office 2016, and uh, some blog posts that are about the history of the TechSoup Donation Program, as well as some related webinars. So these pages provide you with both the access to the product donations as well as some additional supporting content to help you choose and use the right things for your organization. Also under Get Products and Services, you can look for particular categories of products. So if you choose by category or solution, you can see uh, if you're really looking for hardware, let's say, then you would go to Computers and Electronics. And this page will show you all of the hardware uh, that's available through TechSoup. And you can choose from this dropdown which kinds of hardware you're interested in. And the section underneath here will refresh to show you everything that's available. One last way to browse the catalog is by organization type. We have pages that are specifically geared towards different types of organizations that include uh, the, big, the most relevant and interesting uh, product donations that they are eligible for, as well as additional related resources. So for example, if you are joining us from a foundation, we have a foundations page that includes uh, relevant donations and information for your organization type. The other way to find uh, content and products on TechSoup is through the search box at the top. So you really want QuickBooks, let's say. You search for QuickBooks, and the search results will show you on the left. It will show you product donations first, but you can also access uh, articles, webinars, and blog, and community resources related to QuickBooks as well. I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, the Microsoft Software Donation Program. So one thing to note is that uh, when you look at Microsoft products, you'll see that they don't actually have uh, versions or years associated with them. So the version that's currently available through TechSoup is Office 2016, and for Windows it's Windows 10. But 
one of the really cool things about uh, getting technology donations through the Microsoft Donation Program at TechSoup is that you actually can access the current version of the software or one version behind. Yes, so the previous version of, uh, as well. So when you actually go to download and access your uh, Microsoft donation, you can choose the current version or the previous version. Another nice feature that's available is that you have uh, free upgrades within two years after your donation request. So if a new version of Office comes out in the next two years, you can upgrade to that new version for free. Another feature is that you can also downgrade if you want. So for example, you've implemented Windows 10, and then you discover to your chagrin that the, your donor management database just isn't compatible with Windows 10 uh, because it's, it's an older system that you're using. You can actually downgrade uh, through the Microsoft program to a previous version as well. There are a number of other benefits available uh, along with the free upgrade and downgrade options uh, through the Software Assurance Program, uh, including the ability to access uh, the software in multiple languages to get what's called a multi-language pack. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of the Programs also have uh, the option to install the software on a home computer in addition to your work computer. And there are also a ton of e-learning or online learning and training options available through the Software Assurance Program. I'm going to look quickly at a specific product. So let's pick Office Standard. You click View Details. It will take you to the very detailed product page all about Office. And you can see here at the top that it's currently available and that the admin fee is $29. So TechSoup uh, charges a small administrative fee for managing the donation program. This uh, revenue, this money, this admin fee goes uh, to TechSoup not to Microsoft. And this is uh, how TechSoup uh, keeps in business. This is how we are able to offer and manage the donation programs, but also how we are able to bring you educational resources and programming like this webinar today. When you are looking at the product page, uh, you also want to make sure uh, to check if you are supporting multiple organizations that you are requesting for the right one. So let's say you are the IT person for uh, multiple branches. You want to make sure that you are making the request for the right organization. You also want to read through the description of the product, the system requirements, which will tell you uh, what you need hardware and software wise in order to run this program and also double check the rules, eligibility, and restrictions. So for example, for Microsoft products, um, there's a two-year cycle. And within that two-year cycle, uh, organizations can, uh, are limited in the number of products that they can request. And there's also additional detail here uh, about the types of organizations that are eligible for the Microsoft Donation Program. So if you have requested a donation and at some point you uh, were told uh, that you were not eligible for it, details about uh, what kind of organizations are available uh, are listed here. I'm going to go ahead and put it in my cart. So click Add to Cart. And you can see up here I have one item in my cart now. I'm going to click on the cart to step through a couple of pieces of checkout. So I can double check here. Yes, I do actually want this one license of Office. It's going to be $29. I'm going to pr proceed to the restrictions check. And this is where the magical systems behind the scenes at TechSoup uh, 
look at your organization type, subtype, and budget, as well as your donation request history. And those magical systems behind the scenes will then tell you and confirm that you are in fact eligible for this donation. And this is one of the things that's um, very different about getting technology through TechSoup is that it's not really like an Amazon where it's just an online store where you can just go and order whatever you want. Uh, there are um, some a lot of back-end processes and a lot of, of checks that need to happen before uh, donation requests can proceed. So I'm going to click Proceed to Restrictions Check. And it says we've checked the products in your cart, and nothing is flagged, which is great. So I'm going to click Proceed with Donation Request. And there are a couple of other steps. You have to uh, agree to uh, some particular uh, agreements, and uh, many of these are dictated by our donor partners who uh, want to uh, ensure that the organizations that they're supporting uh, are uh, aligned with their philanthropic areas of focus. So I'm just going to click I agree, and proceed with donation request. And you'll get some information at this stage about uh, how, uh, about the next steps in the process. So about how you'll be accessing the donations, what kind of communications you'll be getting, as well as the key thing of the organization email address, which is this is the email that's going to get all of the information about the donation request. So this is an opportunity to double check and make sure that this is actually going to the right email, and it's an email address that you are checking. I'm going to proceed. And you can pay by check or by credit card. Uh, if you pay by check, uh, you won't receive the donated product until uh, we've received the, and processed the check. And I'm going to stop here because I don't have a fake credit card that I'm going to use. I'm just going to go back to the main page. This might actually be a good time to stop and see if there are any questions. I can't actually see the chat when I'm sharing my screen. So let me switch back. Mike Murphy asked if Ghana is eligible for donations. And Ghana is in fact eligible for donations. Uh, go to uh, TechSoup.Global and choose Ghana from the list of, of countries, and you'll be able to see what uh, organizations in Ghana are eligible for. We have also gotten some questions about uh, who to contact if uh, you have questions about the process uh, at any stage, registration, or finding out who is on your account, which leads me to I can share information about how to get more help from TechSoup. So I'm going to switch back over to sharing my screen. If you have questions about your account or the status of your donation request or you're having trouble navigating through TechSoup, you can go under Support and choose Contact Us. And here's the contact information for our very fabulous customer service department. Uh, you can talk to very, very nice people like Bevan who is here in the room with me. And you can call or email uh, to get your questions answered. We also offer a wide variety of other ways to uh, get additional help, one of which is our community forums. So once you're registered, you have access to participate in our forums, which are staffed by friendly and extremely knowledgeable volunteers who are happy to answer your questions. So if you have questions about 
databases or questions about websites, I uh, encourage you to pop into our forums and ask your questions there, and very nice and very smart people will help answer them. We also have many self-service educational resources. So at the top of the site under Resources, we have articles, we have a blog, and we also have, as I mentioned, a webinars page where we show all of our upcoming events, the most recent upcoming event, which is this event right now, other upcoming events, and we have a calendar, a community calendar of events in various places, all educational, all focused on nonprofits. And down at the very bottom, we also have an archive of all of our previous webinars, and you can browse for uh, those by category. So if, for example, you really want to learn how to use QuickBooks, you can choose the accounting category and watch a replay of our really excellent uh, QuickBooks for existing nonprofit users or QuickBooks for new nonprofit users webinars. We also have, as I mentioned, a blog. And we have a number of writers internally, but also uh, external writers, uh, guest writers who are uh, nonprofits themselves uh, and sharing their advice and expertise. So this is a great place to go to uh, learn about uh, technology news, latest things in the TechSoup donation program, as well as uh, advice uh, that you can use at your nonprofit, such as ways to improve your year-end donation pages. It's all practical and it's all directed at a nonprofit audience. If you're the kind of person who likes to learn in person, we also have a program called NetSquared, which is a volunteer community of uh, nonprofit techies uh, who organize and host usually monthly events locally all around the world. So if you are interested in meeting, connecting with, and learning from fellow nonprofits, uh, this netsquared.org is uh, a great way to find out which groups are near you and see if there is one happening in your area. You can search by location. So I'm going to show San Francisco. And there is in fact a local group, two of them, San Francisco Tech for Good and Datakind SF Bay Area. So I can see upcoming events uh, that are uh, local, in-person, nonprofit oriented events uh, where I can go to learn more about various technology topics. The poll results also indicated that people were interested in learning more about our hardware donation programs. So I'm going to show you um, where to find the uh, main categories of hardware, talk a little bit about what's available, as well as some special programs that we have recently introduced. So I think I showed earlier the Computers and Electronics page where you can go to browse the catalog of uh, hardware that's available through TechSoup, including networking hardware. We have a constantly evolving group of products available in our hardware donation programs. So uh, we have at least a quarterly update to our refurbished computer program, which is uh, hardware that has been uh, factory refurbished by our reputable and skilled uh, refurbishment partners. Uh, so it's in, uh, it works as well as a new uh, computer and uh, has uh, usually a, um, depending on the product, a one to three year 
warranty from our refurbishing partners. We also have some special offers that are other ways to access hardware. Including one that's especially cool, which is the Journey Ed program. Now, if you have worked in the past at a school, you may be familiar with Journey Ed. Journey Ed, for a very long time, has been offering discounts to educational organizations, and they just recently expanded in partnership with TechSoup to offer those same discounts to nonprofits and libraries. And Journey Ed has thousands of products available, software, hardware, office supplies, uh, AV equipment, etc. And you can get access to their catalog of discounted products through TechSoup for a $10 admin fee. Uh, like with anything else, um, you know, the, the, the prices on Journey Ed, um, you should uh, double check. Uh, against you know, a, a quick Google search or look on Amazon to see if you are getting the best deal. But on the whole, um, JourneyEd is a great way to be able to access products that aren't actually in the TechSoup catalog. It greatly expands what um, options you have available to you. So they have, um, among other things, they do have hardware. Uh, and tablets as well as um, Apple products which we uh, don't always have available through TechSoup, as well as things like Camtasia from TechSmith, uh, CorelDRAW, VMware, and other products. So this is just a quick shot of the kinds of things that you'll be able to access through the Journey Head program, including hardware. We also have a relatively new TechSoup subscription offer called Boost. Through Boost, you get access to discounts on hardware and special hardware deals, as well as to zero admin fee products. So the admin fee is usually a, a small percentage of the retail value of um, a product. But uh, through Boost, you don't have to pay admin fees on select products. Right now we are focusing on a variety of fundraising products. So for a zero admin fee, you will have access to uh, creating a, an online e-store uh, to sell products through Shopify. You get access to discounted rates for credit card and debit card processing through Dharma Merchant Services. You can get access to mobile optimized websites and text to, to give plans through Connect to Give. And you can do t-shirt sales for fundraising through Teespring. And there are a variety of other products available as well. And this, like our hardware donation program offerings, is constantly evolving. We are constantly trying to offer the best and shiniest and new and exciting things through the Boost program. You also get access to uh, special discounts and expertise, uh, including right now a discount on Foundation Center proposal writing courses. So if you are in the business of writing grants, which many of us are, uh, that's a great resource uh, for your organization as well. Okay, I'm going to switch back to ReadyTalk now. And just skip through the slides. These are just screenshots that I had just in case something went wrong. I'm going to skip through a couple more. I'm going to pause for questions again. See if there are any questions that uh, haven't been answered yet or that would be helpful for other people to have answered. This 
somebody had uh, additional questions about the donation programs um, globally. So uh, if you're from outside the United States or requesting donations on behalf of an organization outside the United States, the registration process will look a little bit different, and the information that you'll be required to have with you is different. So in the U.S., the the main identifying number is your employer identification number. In other countries, that number will be different. So if you are uh, requesting donations for a country like Ecuador, uh, the information that you would provide at that time is whatever the legal identifier for your organization is in that country. And the form should help guide you as to which uh, ID number we are actually looking for as your going through the registration process. <clears throat> we also had a couple of other questions about uh, whether how licensing works. So the question was about uh, if, the, if you order one quantity of something, is that good for one computer or multiple users? In general, uh, the products are one license per user, meaning if I order one copy of Microsoft Office, that is good on one computer. If I want multiple people to be using Microsoft Office, I have to order multiple copies of it. There are some exceptions, and those should be clearly spelled out in the product pages. So for example, QuickBooks from Intuit, there is an option to have a one user license or a three user license. So if you want multiple people to be using your QuickBooks, you can get the three user version of QuickBooks. But each product page should describe how many people are able to use that product that you've ordered. But generally speaking, it's one product per person. We also had some questions about uh, whether people have to write any proposals or anything like that to get donations. They do not. All you have to do is fill out the uh, registration information. And if you are a 501c3 nonprofit or a public library and you meet our donor partners' eligibility requirements, you can access the donation program through TechSoup. And even if you are not eligible for certain donations, all of our educational resources are freely available to any kind of organization anywhere in the world, anytime. We also had a question about whether there is a limitation on the number of purchases per year. And in most cases the answer is yes. Uh, our donor partners uh, will often limit the number of products that you can request per year. And if the um, the product page itself. I will actually go back and show one of them. Let's look at Norton this time. The product page itself under Rules, Eligibility, and Restrictions will usually describe how many products can be requested within a certain time period. So for example, in the case of Norton Security, uh, one Symantec Norton Security product and up to 20 licenses can be requested within a fiscal year. So if you have questions about whether uh, you can still uh, order additional request additional donations, do check out the rules, eligibility, and restrictions. And if you aren't quite sure off the top of your head how much you've ordered in the past, you can also review that. I just clicked on my email address up here at the top of the screen, and that takes me to my TechSoup profile. Within the TechSoup profile, it will show me the organizations that I am associated with. And it will also show me where I am in the process of being validated as a, an eligible nonprofit. So in my case, uh, the qualification status here is qualification pending, 
because I'm not a real nonprofit. I work for a real nonprofit, but this is just a test organization. So if your status says qualification pending or some other status, uh, this, is, this will uh, help you understand kind of where you are in the process of becoming eligible for the donation program. You'll also be able to access your donation request history through your member profile. So if you just click on Donation Request History, this is where you'll see your previous donation requests. I don't have any because I haven't actually done any orders through TechSoup, but they would all be listed here along with the request number, date, the organization you requested it for, and the status. And the request number is a really handy thing to have access to because if you call our customer service people, one of the first things they are going to ask you is uh, for your organization ID number, uh, but also for your specific donation request number. So you can always access that here. The Microsoft Donation Program, Microsoft by far our biggest and most generous donor partner. When I said we, um, TechSoup had facilitated $5 billion of donations, Microsoft is responsible for about four of those Bs in the billions. So uh, Microsoft also has some very specific rules about how many donation requests you can get over a two-year cycle. So we've given additional information about Microsoft donations that you can access through the Microsoft Donation Center, including the rules at a glance and uh, information about when your Microsoft donation cycle starts and finishes. And a good clear summary here of how many products in your total allotment you have used and how many more are available to you. We also have additional support resources available that we encourage you to check out, one of which is uh, the Frequently Asked Questions about the Product Donation Program. Lots of additional information available here to help explain uh, some of the occasional complexities of the TechSoup Donation Program. As I mentioned before, you can also find contact information for our Customer Service Department. And when you call or email them, they greatly appreciate it if you have your uh, employer identification number, tax ID number, and or TechSoup donation request number when you get in touch with them. That helps them help you more quickly. We also have additional resources once you've requested a donation through TechSoup under Support Using Your Donation. For our biggest and most popular donation programs, we have curated content or gathered together content to help you make the most of your donation. So you can check here to find additional resources and training materials uh, to help you make the best use of your donation because we don't want you to just access technology. We want you to use it enthusiastically and efficiently to support your mission. All right. We have about five minutes left. I'm going to do a last check to see if there are any unanswered questions. Ooh, we have a hard one that I don't know the answer to. Bevan, somebody has asked if uh, whether the donations through TechSoup are reported to the IRS for tax purposes. If so, do they get a yearly form to report such benefits? Um, I actually have not had that question before. Um, it is a donation, so I imagine that you might want to keep the confirmation page that's sent out after you place a request just for reference. And if you do find that this issue comes up, you'll have something to go back to. Once you place a donation, um, you'll receive a confirmation email. And there's also a confirmation page that's prompted um, that prompts you to print out for your records. 
Um, so if you do find that you are being asked for additional information from the IRS, uh, definitely go ahead and reference that product page um, or that confirmation page. But again, I'm, I'm actually not sure about that 100%. <laughs> So we can confirm that and uh, we'll, we'll be able to follow up afterwards. And also you get a prize for stumping Devin. <laughs> we have a couple of other uh, last minute questions. Uh, one was about uh, whether you need to pay the admin fee for each product, yes. Each product has a specific admin fee associated with it. So if the product is $10 and you need four of that product, the total admin fee that you would pay is $40. And another related question is uh, whether the admin fee is refundable. Uh, what happens, Bevan, if people change their mind and no longer want the product? So one thing uh, so it's important to really review the product page before you place a donation request. It does state on most product pages that the administrative fee is not actually refundable because what happens when you place this request is that our donor partners issue licensing that's specific to your organization and we can't reuse these if you decide that you no longer need the product. Um, that's why it's really, really important and I would really recommend that you are, have a clear understanding of the product and use the, all the information available on the product page. Um, there are specific exceptions that we can make for refunds, um, but as soon as you download a product and use it, that just very much makes it non-refundable. Um, but if you do have any questions or need more information about whether or not you can refund an administrative fee for a product, you can give us a call for support. You can reach us at 800-659-3579 um, to speak with a representative like me or somebody else that will help you answer those questions. But typically, no refunds on product donations. All right, thank you. All right, we are getting close to the top of the hour. So while I'm winding down, it, why don't you chat in one thing you learned in today's webinar and uh, let us know if you have any additional questions that we can hopefully uh, help answer after the webinar via email uh, or some other fashion, uh, as well as uh, what one takeaway thing that you learned and whether you are going to be accessing the TechSoup donation program. As I mentioned, you will also be receiving uh, an email with links to uh, various additional resources uh, as well as would encourage you to check out our upcoming webinars and events. On December 3rd, we have Measuring What Matters with Google Analytics, which is a special 90-minute hands-on webinar that will help you understand what's working well and what's not working well on your website. And on the 16th, for those of you joining us from a library, we have 15 ways to improve your library's Facebook page. Before you drop off today, uh, I would encourage you to stay on for just an extra minute to answer our quick poll that will help us uh, understand what worked well in this webinar and help us improve going forward. So thank you to everybody for joining us today, and also thank you to our webinar sponsor ReadyTalk who is a TechSoup donor partner and provides the platform for us to be able to offer this and other events. Thanks everyone. Bye.